blinking red light for? I don't. You're I don't. Live. What does that mean? You're live. What? You're live. We're live. Right now. We're Action! Live, right? Hey, I'm Zach. Hi, and I'm Tori. Welcome to Ubisoft's official pre-show. It's pretty good to be back in LA. It's beautiful to be back in LA. Uh, thank you very much to all of you who are watching on the stream, all of you in the Orpheum Theater. Hey, Mom. Got about 15 minutes to go until showtime. Uh, in the meantime, let's uh, let's look at some videos. We've got a little time to play with. This is the Rabbit's Invasion. Whoa. Zach and I, we work at Ubisoft, and that's something that we're pretty proud of. I would agree. Ubisoft Toronto represent... What's up, Morrisville? No, we've got another video of... on the roof. Well, of course the upstairs roof. What do you... No, for sure it was Zach's fault. It's always Zach's fault. <laughs> Tori can't even reach the door. <laughs> Dude! We've got another video for you, this one from some fellow Ubisoft members, exploring how some of their personal passion projects may play into the workplace. My passion is urban exploration and looking at different subcultures and different expressions of human identity. It's all about adventure, about the outdoors and getting out and exploring a lot of the spaces that we've got around us. For me, this is like a giant playground. I've been dancing for more than 10 years now. Dance is always in my mind, as long as there's music basically, <laughs> there is dancing in my head. I work with recycled and refurbished materials to create my furniture and my lamps. This is something really important for me to take objects that are already there and uh, just give them a second life. One of the things that I love is telling a story. Like, it's one of the things that I love doing most in the world. We like thinking about how people are going to interact with a piece, which is kind of what we try to bring to our community development work. And it's very cool that Ubisoft nurtures that. I'm kind of lucky to have a job where I can sort of link my passion to what I do every day. I think that it's been in me for so long now that I don't think that I can live without it. The fact that I'm able to come here and document and bring these experiences back to developers and players I think is something that's quite unique and I think Ubisoft gives us that chance to explore ourselves and bring it into our work. When I'm outdoors, my passion is to explore, to create my own paths and to not follow the crowd. And I love that that extends to my work at Ubisoft, to find new ways, new methods and new approaches for doing things. As producer on Grow Home, I brought together the team and we turned what was a cool physical toy into a fantastic little game. I have this eye that can see what is interesting regarding content creation by the community. Then I can pass them on to the dev teams and inspire them to make the best game possible. We want to create objects that the fans can interact with. We want to create a story that the fans can kind of get behind. I think that there's a whole meta experience to be had. Mm -hmm. People just want to know 
more. They want it to be a fully fleshed out world. And if we can provide that to them, then that's awesome. It's essentially about understanding people, understanding how we interact with the world, and how to make them feel in a place that they've never been before, yet still feels really real and authentic. Okay, let's take these guys out first as quietly as possible. There's always a lot of different possibilities to come to the same result. And that's exactly what level design is. It's taking all these elements that everybody creates and rearrange them together to make a compelling game experience. Seriously stuck on the roof still. Before we go any further, uh, I'm told to remind you that if there's anything you see or hear over the next few days from Ubisoft that you want to talk about on the social medias, use the hashtag UBE3. 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 So last year, Zach and I were a part of the Uplay Lounge and we met some pretty cool fans. But this year, some fans have gone above and beyond. So Ubisoft created the Ubisoft Star Player Program. Hey guys, what's up? Are you comfy down there? We are so lucky to have such vocal fans who let us know about their passions and feedback on the games that we make for them. You know, and sometimes we do get some constructive feedback. So this next video is for you haters. Don't get us wrong, we do love you. Thanks for keeping it real. Yaz says, I hate Far Cry 4. Why would you make me kill a monkey? Why wouldn't you kill a monkey, Yaz? Why wouldn't you? Are there any others that are like a little bit tougher than this? Kipper Radix says, Far Cry 4 is f***ing garbage. This game f***ing sucks. Fuck. This one is from Day Jack at Ubisoft, at The Crew Game, at Twitch. That game trash. That dirt racing shit. Garbage fools. Are we allowed to say shit? <laughs> I need another one. <laughs> From Chris Cleelo. I never buy Ubisoft games because your games are badly optimized. I pirate that garbage and laugh at its ass. What the fuck are you gonna do? I had dinner with Yves Gaymore once, and I can confirm he's three feet six inches tall. That's a tweet from Ben Silverman. Thank you, Ben. This one is from Rionra1. Uh, dear at Ubisoft, I refuse to buy your games. They are bad, you should feel bad. You need to make like a kangaroo and bounce. <laughs> I did feel bad until you told me to bounce like a kangaroo. Then I was happy. Another one from Chris Clelo. Hey dude, loving my pirate copy of Far Cry 4. Shit game, but I just like stealing. So this one is from Anthony Edwards 7. He says, the worst part about Assassin's Creed Unity is that it's in France. Well, you don't have to worry about that this year, do you? Because it's in London! Yay! <laughs> Sincerely, we do appreciate the fact that you guys reach out and let us know how you feel about our games. And we do try to read everything that you send in because it definitely helps us make better games. And it's kind of a big part of what we do as a community team. You know, last year, Just Dance held a competition to find the best dancers in the world. They invited the top three to visit the Paris studio to meet the team and play against the devs. And I mean, they are devs, but because they make Just Dance, I think there's the expectation that they can, you know, actually move, that they can dance. But I mean, they're okay. devs, so I want to see how this plays out.
it's really amazing to be recognized as a world champion because um, I, I really never thought I would be a Just Dance world champion and it's one of my favorite gaming series, so it's really awesome. It's a pleasure for me. I started playing with my little cousins. They had the, the Wii and the first Just Dance. I didn't know about that. Uh, so they put on the game and tell me, play with us. I said, okay, let's play. And I always loved to dance. So for me, it was like a revelation. In the Just Dance World uh, competition, uh, Matthew, when I was competing on stage, called me a Just Dance machine. And this was a, a hard feeling for me. So I decided to do this Uh, just Dance Machine phrase. É um privilégio estar aqui, conhecer tudo, a, o figurino, conhecer a, o de novo Just Dance, ter oportunidade de voltar em Paris. A, eu fiz amizade com outros competidores do World Cup. Eu posso revê-los e a gente se encontrar, fazer flash mob. Está sendo uma experiência bem legal e está sendo tudo assim muito, ah, muito feliz de estar aqui. But amazing. So those guys are very perfect dancer, you know. So in my whole life, I never met just a dancer like this. Keep calm and just dance. I never doubted you guys for a second. But part of the Ubisoft Star Player Program, we've got Diego and Tulio, two of the guys you saw in that video right there. They are sitting front row. Gentlemen, I challenge you to a dance-off live on our stream Wednesday at the tippy top of that building right there in the Uplay Lounge. It's going down. Here we go. So we're only a few minutes away from showtime and I'm excited. I am too. Let's take one more trip though down random access memory lane.
deal. The king has risen. And in his reign, the kingdoms of human and elf are united. The relic which threatened to destroy all was cast out to sea, seemingly forgotten. But now a new foe has awakened. The relic reclaimed. And what was once a powerful union lies fractured throughout the lands. All right, who put the stick of truth in the toilet? That is not funny. This is a holy relic. That was barely even an RPG, Cal. The combat sucked. We're going to do it bigger, and we will settle for nothing less than a 9-5 on GameSpot. A dark sorcerer has emerged. Who is it? Tell us, great mage of Xantros. Oh, man, I have no idea what's going on right now. We're under attack, and the new kid is stuck in a dream level. No, no dream level. This game has to be sweet, lad. Show yourself, villain. Ha-ha! <laughs> Your superpowers are no match for me, Coonin friends. Tune in, friends. Ah, oh, shit, we got the wrong game. Everybody switch games, we're playing superheroes now. Coon Fritz, go! We're not playing games anymore, Mom. This time, it's serious. South Park, the fractured butthole. <laughs> now available for pre-order. Yeah, <laughs> everyone pre-order, that's a good idea. Shut up, butter! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome two of my favorite human beings in the entire world, Matt Stone and Shrey Parker. How are you guys doing? Hi. First of all, I'd just like to say that these mics are fucking dumb. <laughs> and I feel like an idiot wearing it. Don't act like you don't wear those during sex every look single night, my friend. Look at this. Look at you. You guys look great. Come on. Thank you. You, you look like you're going to take my order. I want french fries. Supersize <laughs> it. Uh, yeah. First of all, the trailer for the game looks amazing. Are you guys excited about it? Yeah. It's weird because you don't seem like you are. Yeah. And also, right. I feel it's like... these mics. That, it's the know. mics that are just... Yeah, it's the mics are throwing us, but okay. Yeah. We don't know what to do with our hands. <laughs> Pockets. <laughs> or inside your pants. Right. Uh, I read that you guys, after the last game, uh, said that you were never, ever, ever going to make another video game again. That's true. And, um, <laughs> but... Uh, the, the, big, the big thing is we're kind of whiny babies, mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> we, we just realized that at the end, right at the end of Stick of Truth, we mm -hmm. kind of learned how to make video games, <laughs> and it was kind of too late, yeah. and we were like, well, fuck, now we know how to make a good video game, yeah. so we have a good template to do it, and we thought, fuck it, let's do it. Yeah, yeah. do it again. Yeah, we might regret it, but we're doing it again. Yeah. Look, I want to say, <laughs> knowing you two, uh, I don't think a fear of regret has ever kept you from doing anything. No. I think you have, that has to be a... You've we've, done had, some, we've had some regrets. Yeah, yeah I'm saying just regrets, power yeah. through it. Now, um, who, who are you working with on this game? Uh, we're working with U Ubisoft San Francisco, and um, it's yeah. basically... Yeah, obviously, everyone find the crowd for that. Um, <laughs> it's, a, you know, it's the next chapter. It, it continues the story of Stick of Truth, where you're the new kid, and you're in, you, know, you now have moved to South Park. But now the kids are playing, obviously, superheroes, mm -hmm. and so we get really into your backstory as the new kid of what... Like any superhero adventure, like we get into your backstory of why your butthole is so amazing, basically. Yeah. We get deep into that God, butthole we're story. We're going to get deep into your butthole. Yeah, in this deep game. into your butthole on this one. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, sweeter, more <laughs> kind words have never been spoken. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the oh, legends of South Park, Trey Parker, Matt Stone. Thank you. Wear those microphones home. I love you. Bye. Give it up, Trey and Matt. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Ubisoft's E3 215, that's not a year, 2015 press conference. Uh, 215, we'd have no technology, we'd all be incredibly miserable, staring into our hands, waiting for somebody to tweet us back. I am so insanely happy to be here today. 
And I don't know about you guys, but I feel like this is a super special time of year because I love games and I think it's the rare time of year that journalists, developers, gamers, and fans of the industry get to come together in one place and collectively lose our shit. So I am so, so happy to be here. On behalf of the UB team, I want to welcome everybody here to the historic Orpheum Theater in LA, as well as all the gamers, fans, and journalists tuned in online from all over the world. And we have got a very special welcome here for some of our most dedicated fans, Ubisoft star players who are here from around the globe. Please stand and wave. Take your moment in the sun. You guys look amazing. Some of you look more amazing than others. I bet the rest of you wish you had more than just a fucking t-shirt, but that's okay, we'll talk about it later. Cosplaying like a boss, like a boss. All right, sit down. Few industries have consumers as passionate and personally invested as the gaming industry. One day you're on a message board calling for the abrupt, non-consensual removal of a CEO's reproductive organ on a message board, and the next thing you know, you've got a Far Cry logo tattooed on your face. And let's be honest, I think we all know this has been a very intense year for Ubisoft, and there's been no shortage of, shall we call it, constructive feedback, or online teabagging, whatever you want to call it. But I can say, personally, that after working for these guys for four years, the Ubisoft teams listen and they take what you think very, very seriously. We believe here that passionate and honest feedback makes games better. Even if you have to dig through ear-burning NSW, NSW, NSFW, NSFW, guys, that's a word, Reddit thread to get it, you know what I'm talking about. The UB team has a single driving passion. They love games and they want to make kick-ass games that you want to play. And to that end, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the guy with all the surprises, Ubisoft CEO, Yves Guimau. How are you? How are you? Welcome. It's good to have you back. Actually. I, you know, we were in rehearsal. You know how excited I am about this press conference. You guys are going to lose it. This is going to be awesome. Enjoy. Okay, thank you. I love gaming, and I love the people that create the games. But I also love a lot the people that play those games. So it's a... Uh, At Ubisoft, we do take risks. It has been part of our DNA from day one. And we will continue to take risks to amaze gamers and create the games of tomorrow. And today, I have a surprise for you, as we said. And this surprise is a new IP in a new genre. And this game couldn't wait till the end of the show. So enjoy it now.
When you look inside yourselves, huh? Do you see a knight? A Viking? Samurai, perhaps, huh? When your enemies are arriving at the gate and the sword is coming at your head, would you turn and run? Would you stand and fight? <laughs> My name is Jason Vandenberg, creative director. For Honor offers you the opportunity to experience the adrenaline and the danger of a melee combat in a visceral battlefield through a new type of gameplay that we call the art of battle. You will feel the weight of the weapon in your hand, the crash as you block the attack, and the impact when you strike the winning blow. But bring your friends with you. Because while a single individual can win a fight, it takes a band of warriors to win a battle. And when I say a band of warriors, <laughs> I mean two teams of four warriors in a live multiplayer demonstration on console right now. Thank you very much. So, that was just a tease of our current bill. It's a taste of what For Honor has in store for you. But I know what you're thinking. I mean, that looks pretty cool, Vandenberg. But when can we play? How about noon tomorrow at the Ubisoft booth with a 100% hands-on 4v4 multiplayer demo on console? Thank you very much. And for those of you watching at home, go register at ForHonorGame.com to get more info and get a chance to be among the very first to play the game. Thank you very much, and have a great E3. Nice! <laughs> that was awesome. Guys, give it up for Jason Vandenberg. Let him hear it. Woo.
the For Honor Gaming team. Oh, I'm walked to the gym. Now, I just want to say, uh, I, that was super juicy. I really love that last beheading. These next two games are already fan favorites. And in response to the feedback from Ubisoft's incredibly engaged communities, the teams have created some incredibly cool expansion packs. Since the crew's release last year, millions of players have spent over 20 million hours free riding all across the United States. That's more than 3,000 times the distance from the Earth to the Moon, which, by the way, you cannot drive. The Crew Wild Run expansion pack introduces new larger-than-life vehicles and gives you the chance to compete in ongoing championships called summits all over the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. Yes, I just get excited. I want to run all over the stage. Uh, now, if you think that was awesome, this next thing is incredible. I saw this next trailer in rehearsal, and I just, there are absolutely no words to describe it, so just, just check it out. just a tiny taste of the Trials Fusion awesome Level Max expansion pack that's coming out on the 14th of July on Xbox One, PS4, and for the PC. And for any Trials Fusion fan, it's the business. And if you are even a tiny bit still on the fence about this, uh, dude, you're a cat riding a fire-breathing unicorn. <laughs> what are you, a robot? <laughs> now, my friends, we're going to make a hard right turn from kitties and unicorns to a virus-ridden urban hellscape. Yeah. Yes. We have having the same feel at this exact same time. Prepare your bodies for one of UB's most highly anticipated games to date. It's time for The Division. Please welcome to the stage Ryan Barner, game director on The Division. Give it up for Ryan. Bernard. Say your last name right, Bernard. Hi, right, Bernard. Aisha. Hi, it's oh, good to see you. Is my mic working? All right, it's good yeah, to see you. Yes, good to see welcome. You. All right, hello everyone. Uh, so as probably most of you know, from judging from the response out here, uh, The Division is an online open world action RPG. But at its core, it's a cooperative experience. But today, we're here to introduce you to The Dark Zone, a walled off, quarantined, highly contaminated area all through the middle of Manhattan. And it's here where, as a player, you have the choice whether to work alongside other agents or turn against them. In the Dark Zone, we want you to experience the tension and the fear and the paranoia of playing in a place where absolutely anything can happen at any time. Mm -hmm. A place where you can trust no one. Yeah, like Hollywood. Exactly, by Hollywood. Mm -hmm. So here's a glimpse of what could happen to you in the dark zone.
Alright guys, you ready? Dark Zone. Yep. I just got a mask upgrade. I want to try it out in there and get us some good loot. Sweet. Let's do it. Remember, when we get in there, it might not be just us. I feel about this game. I, I loved it. 
even when the even when the build wasn't finished. Yes, when you but, weren't supposed to play. Yeah, it looks amazing. Uh, huge dick move there at the end. Yeah. But um, I just I want to say I mean this as a compliment. This game is looking like it needs to come with a giant barrel of Xanax. Yeah. Later time. Maybe DLC. <laughs> yeah. Um, when does everybody else get to crap themselves in terror the same way that I did when I played the game last year on the floor? Uh, well, for those of you lucky enough to be with us here at E3, for the first time, the division is hands-on playable at our booth. So hopefully everyone will come by and play. We're excited about that. Awesome. Uh, and also, for those of you at home who are clamoring to get your hands on the game early, we're happy to announce that we're going to be having betas on uh, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC starting early next year. So everyone will get to play. It's going to be super exciting. Now, oh wait, and, and please check that out to be able to figure out, uh, get more information about the betas. Sweet. Now, now that we know they're moving into beta, when is the game actually going to be available to everybody out there to play, buy, and put into their home box holes? Yes. Uh, today, we're super happy to announce that Tom Clancy's The Division will be released on March 8, 2016, on all platforms simultaneously. Yay! 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 <laughs> everybody right. give it up. So thank you very much, everyone, and have a great E3. Brian Bernard, everybody. I'm here. I just, uh, I, I did get to play this game. It's tactical, it's terrifying, it's obviously incredibly cool, so I can't wait for you guys to check it out on the floor. Now, next up this afternoon is the newest release of the critically acclaimed City Builder from Ubisoft's Blue Byte Studio. So everybody, pack up your astronaut diapers because we are departing this planet. is awesome, but you don't actually get to start on the moon. You have to earn your lunar landing. So the following gameplay sequence shows how you can make your own giant leap for mankind. And if you want to test out the game, stay tuned for the beta, which starts later this year.
So we've had samurai, we've had fire-breathing unicorns, tallies, spaceships, virus-ridden dark zones. This has been a pretty meme-friendly show. What do you think? Yeah, it's pretty awesome. You're actually sitting here and you are your own human life-size meme. Tell me who you are. Well, I'm Rick from RBF Productions and L, and uh, Ubisoft requested me here as Jacob Fry. Jacob Fry from AC Syndicate. That's right. That's look insanely hot. <laughs> the, I, but a guy from your era probably has rickets or something I can catch, but you look amazing. <laughs> we should come up with a meme really quickly for this show. Right now, I'm pitching who kept the Christmas lights on during the apocalypse, but there's got to be, and just. Captain Picard, like screaming that out. Do you have a meme you want to you want to pitch? Uh, Guys with rickets are super hot. Well, if you're talking Picard, it will be engage. Okay, good. We we did that together. All right. Uh, standing next to me right now, my friends, is Jason Altman, the executive producer of our next game, looking just as foxy as Jacob Fry, with almost fewer rickets. <laughs> um, with 110 million players, a billion songs danced, and more than a billion lifetime views on YouTube, this game franchise is one of the pillars of the Ubisoft family. Right? It's time for Just Dance 2016. It is indeed. <laughs> Thanks, Aisha. I'm going to leave it to you. It's the fans that have made Just Dance the success that it is. And because of them, I'm really proud to say that Just Dance has become the biggest music video game franchise of all time. I gave him his spotlight. So... Now that we're into this, tell me what's happened since last year, because this has been amazing. We're back with Just Dance 2016 on all motion platforms, and I got a little bit of news. Mm. You don't need a camera connected to your console to play the game anymore. You'll be able to use your smartphone as a controller to play Just Dance 2016. If you have a camera-enabled console, you're good. You're great. But we know many of you don't. And we're excited to be opening up the game to all console owners, regardless of their setup. And they're going to have lots to look forward to. An awesome track list, a few hits, new features, and like always, a few surprises. Like this one. What? First of all, 
I want to give you a huge congratulations because your album, Everything Is For, and the single, Want to Want Me, just hit number one on the top 40 radio charts this morning. So number Thank one. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And uh, it was amazing seeing you up there. You know, I, I had to stay up my seat. You know what? I, 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 you know, I, I'm so glad this song is number one this mm -hmm. week and everything, but I, the only thing is I, I just wish you came up here and danced oh, with us. Lord. You know what I'm saying? It was... <laughs> I just, sadly, Jason, I am living stumbling proof that not all of our people can dance. That's just, you know there's got to be it. one. I missed that meeting. But I want to I wanna get into it because I actually heard that you are actually a big fan of Just Dance. I am. Huge fan. Uh, you know, I, I love the idea that, you know, music can inspire people. But I feel like this, this video game is, is such a part of pop culture. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it allows, you know, the, the, the young ones like my little niece who loves to play the game. And, you know, older folks like my mom who necessar doesn't necessarily know how to dance but it makes her feel like you know she could get it so it inspires <laughs> everybody you know what i mean yeah it's really great um and i'm really excited because this obviously this song is a huge hit it's a number one hit it's going to be in the game oh, thank you people are going to want to buy it they're going to dance they want to be like you can't be jason derulo but you can be like jason derulo um so thank you so much for coming out today that My was so pleasure. exciting so I that was a big surprise ladies and gentlemen i'm gonna see you tomorrow Ma, give it up for jason derulo everybody so Aisha, before I uh, run backstage and try to grab a selfie with Jason Derulo. We are going to fight about that. We are. <laughs> <laughs> I have one more thing to share. Uh, Just Dance 2016 will be available this October on all platforms. The Wii, Xbox 360, PS3. But we have something special for Wii U, Xbox One, and PS4 players. Awesome. We're introducing a streaming service that brings new songs all year long and all the greatest hits of Just Dance straight to your console. It's something the fans have been asking for for a long time. It's called Just Dance Unlimited, and it's the first ever Dance On Demand streaming subscription service. Awesome. Anyone with a copy of Just Dance 2016 on Wii U, Xbox One, or PS4 will be able to subscribe. That's killer. It it's is. so great. That's just new, fresh content all the time. So great. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Everybody bid up for the other Jason, OJ, Jason Altman. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It was my pleasure. I called you here today because we face dire circumstances. Our intelligence has confirmed the existence of a new threat that is unlike any we have seen before. This organization has the ability to carry out attacks anywhere in the world. They are highly lethal and indiscriminate of age, religion, or nationality. The potential for loss of human life and psychological terror is substantial and cannot be ignored. They are the very definition of an unknown quantity. Our only choice of action is to meet force with force. As of this moment, my program is reactivated, and I am handing over command of all global field operations to you. Recruit your operators from among the world's foremost elite. Borders and protocols are irrelevant. We must be the shield that safeguards the civilized world from those who wish to do it harm. No matter how or where our enemies strike, no matter what defense they cower behind, Team Rainbow must stand ready. Now, if you watched the conference last year, you know that I personally lost my shit when I saw Rainbow Six Siege. I was so excited. I love this franchise. Judging from the audience reaction, I think we're all having the same feeling about this game. It is close quarters combat like you have never experienced before. Everything is destructible. And my friends, once you die, you stay dead. 
It's explosive, it's bone-rattling, it's intense, and it's led by an equally intense but cool-headed woman by the name of Six. You probably recognized her in the cinematic trailer, and now it is my great honor to welcome to the stage the extraordinary Angela Bassett. I, I love this game, I love this franchise, Good. but now that you're in it, I don't even know, I got, I just, <laughs> so, <laughs> this is actually the first time that you've been in a video game. My first time, right? yeah. So yeah. tell me a little bit about that, that experience for you. Oh, well, you know, thank you, mm -hmm. Aisha. Yeah, I play the role of Six, and I'm the deputy director of the Rainbow Six Counterterrorism Unit. It has been a great experience so far. And you know, I'm all about playing interesting characters, and this yeah. definitely was the venue for that. Yeah, for that. I, I think, actually, uh, people don't realize how complex video game acting can be. When mm -hmm. I was in Watch Dogs, my character got pancaked by a garbage truck, so I'm just happy to see Aww. that yours is a little bit more layered than my experience. Yeah, Six <laughs> managed to avoid all that, at least to my knowledge. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, well, mostly she just guides the Rainbow Unit, you know, to make sure that the operations has, you know, all of the intel that they need to be able to eliminate threats. Right. You've, you, I mean, as an actress, it's incredible to be here with you because you, you've played everyone. Uh, Tina Turner, Dr. Betty Shabazz, Rosa Thank Parks, you. now you're Marie Laveau in American Horror Story. Yeah. In what, in, were there any ways in which doing this work differed from those other experiences for you? Well, I've always gravitated toward characters that, you know, challenge me as an actor. So mm -hmm. in that respect, it wasn't very much different. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of, you know, stuff from a movie set or TV set that was applicable to this. You know, mm -hmm. it's all about character and it's all about story, okay. you know, and I was able to really just take on the character and make it my own. And, and of course, you had the director who was there leading you because you were, you know, there alone. So you right. wanted to make sure that the stakes were heightened and you were exactly where you needed to be. And, you know, for those gamers who are out there who are it, taking, taking command. Yeah, and it's an immersive experience. It's like living through a film. And with you in this film, we get to all play opposite you. So I know it's a dream come true for me. I can't wait to see what you've done with it. Ladies Thank and gentlemen, you. Truly one of the great actresses of our time. Please give it up for Angela Bassett. Thank you. Thank you. So Enjoy exciting. the game. Well, just, thank you. <laughs> thank, you thank you. Give it up for Angela Bassett, everybody. All right. So, so far we've only been talking about uh, multiplayer, but there is so much more to Siege. And here to tell us more about it, please welcome to the stage Geneviève Forger, the community developer on Rainbow Six Siege. Hey, lady. Hey. <laughs> Thanks, Aisha. Hi, everyone. Ever since we announced at E3 last year, the community has been asking about the solo and co-op experiences of our game. Today, we are glad to announce that Terrant is back. It will be playable solo or with up to four friends. In Terror Hunt, our players will be facing the most challenging AI in a Rainbow Six game yet. The terrorists will be able to create a stronghold and lead an assault using destruction in unexpected ways. So let's see it in action. Our team's mission will be to disarm bombs set in a French consulate. We'll be following Team Captain Chris Henry over here throughout this demo. Keep in mind that this is a live demo and anything can happen. We hope you enjoy. Chris, are you ready? Yes, Jen, thank you. Team, are you ready? Yeah, of course. Yep. Good yep. luck let's do and it. have fun. Hope you enjoy it. All right, guys, let's, let's do this. Yep. Yeah. Bruno, go. I want you to start heading to the right-hand side with your team. Gab, yeah, let's stay back for a second and scout the left-hand side here. Yeah, OK. Uh, let me see. No, there's nothing on the left. I got the front door barricaded. It looks like the balcony up top, the two windows are barricaded, too. OK. I said we stick close to Bruno here. Let's move up. Yeah, let's go. Air yeah, side is clear. I see an opening on the top floor through that window in the corner there. Okay, yeah, let's head top, guys. Uh, strike him at the east side wall. Let me know if you see anybody inside the window, all right? Yeah, okay. Bruno, let's head to the roof real quick, too. All right, we just got it out. Okay, so we have two guys inside. Uh, we could probably take them out quietly. Okay, coming up to the roof now, Bruno. Yes, clear on my side. Look good? Yeah. 
Okay, I'm gonna need a hand here. Does anybody have a silencer on the other side? I have a silencer and I have visual. Come down on go. Anytime. Three, two, one, go. Got him. All right, good job, guys. Nice work. Get right inside. Right in. in. Take a look at the back of the room. Make sure it's clear. Yeah, it's clear. Okay, let's see. Let's, let's sit up here for a second, guys. Yep. I want to send my drone out to scout before I move up. You look pretty good behind the first barricade. I don't see too much. There's another barricade on the right here, and I got a lot of nitro cells set up just behind it. I also saw, yeah, I saw a bomber here in the middle of the hallway. Nico, can you send your drone out? Start taking care of the drone, uh, the traps. Yeah, I'll send my shot drone. Is okay, careful. Yeah, bomber's right there. Hold on, hold on. That's when he starts going back. All right. Okay, you're good, man. He's coming back now. I'm safe. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Go for it. I'm gonna start moving up. Keep an eye on the bomber, all right? He's coming back. I'll back off. I have one shield here at the end of the hallway. I got a guy behind the desk. The bomb, 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 the 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 Okay, you guys ready to move up? Yep, yes we yep. are. Go. Gab, Nico, myself, we're gonna head down the main hallway. Bruno, Meg, come over here. Okay. Tear down the wall and start coming down the left-hand side. Going in. I'll give you some cover. You got a shield right in front of you. Uh, slow down a bit. Coming. Okay. Clear the room? Yep. We good? Yeah. Yep. Clear. Okay, hey Nico, can you breach this door in front of us now? Anything for you. You guys ready? Yeah, go for right, it, man. Go for it, Nico. One. Moving forward. Okay. So there's the other barricade. The bomber is behind the second one there, Gab. Yep. I'm going to let you push up first, all right? Yeah, okay. Go. Okay, I'm going. Stay back a little bit. I don't the bomber's, see bomber's He's right, right there. He's right there. Okay, coming away. Back up, back up, back up. He's right there. I can't get him. No, I got him. I got him. Do you need help? No, we're you. okay, no. we're okay. Nico, pick me up. Okay. Yeah, I got you. Here. Take this. Nice work, okay. Yeah, thanks. You're hurt, eh, man? Yeah, I'm pretty hurt. On, the hallway's pretty open, so take cover behind my shield here. Okay, we're gonna start moving up the main hall. You guys can start moving up on the left-hand side. Yeah, take your time. There's a couple of guys down at the end here. Uh, there's a lot of them. Three guys. Four. Okay, I'm reloading. Back, reloading. Back, back down. down. Back I'm back down. down. I'm, I'm down. down. I, got I got him. I got him. I got him. Bruno, pick him up. Yep. Push forward. There's one guy in the console open. Got one down. Two down. I'm reloading. I'm reloading. Got one. I got one. Okay, start yeah. moving up. Bruno, bag. Yep. I want to come through the wall, alright? Going hard. Okay. I see one more. Okay. I'm right behind you. Go Chris. for it. Go for it. Push up. Push up. Yeah, breaching. Okay. Take a look on the right, Nico. Yeah. Got my back. Yeah, I'm watching. Alright, breaching. The room's clear. Clear. Hold well, on, Nico's clear on the right hand side. Right. Think we're good. We're good. They're both down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nice we work, got guys. this. Yeah, good job. Let's set up here. Well, they point in the front door and check the hallway there. Uh, Mag, you see to your left there, there's a wall? Yep. Can you make a couple of holes for me there? Sure. I'll keep an eye on the back stairs. Okay. So I'm gonna drop the diffuser right behind you. Yeah, I gotta cover. We gotta hold it for a minute. Yeah, we got this. Let's do it, guys. Coming behind you, Gab. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna create an opening here. There you go. Waiting room, waiting room. Right now? Yeah. Yep. Don't yeah. stand up, don't stand up. Be careful with the windows, guys. Another one, another one. Okay. 45 seconds left. Yeah, I'm right behind you. Yeah. I'm gonna take a look at the stairs real quick. One in the hallway. I got one coming back stairs. Yeah, one coming another back one. stairs. Another one, another one in the hallway. Watch the left. Back stairs. I got, uh, charge, charge mind you, guys. Charge mind you. I'm coming, I'm coming. Waiting room, I'm down, guys. I'm taking these spots. There's two guys back there. Don't move, don't move. Not moving. Okay, okay. Back, back up. Back I, back up. I got it. I got it. He's coming oh, in the back windows. windows. Yeah. Back windows. Nah, They're in the back windows covered. It's okay. 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 Yeah, I got you, Nico. All right. Hold up. I got the hallway. 15 seconds, guys. Keep it up. Wait, keep it up. Windows again. Appointment. Back stairs. Stay there, guys. Don't move. Back stairs. Appointment. Back stairs. Yeah. Step over the diffuser. Five seconds. Nice work. Hold it on, guys. Keep it up. Keep it up. Down. I'm down. Nice work, guys. We got this. Yeah. Let's go ahead to the other bomb. Nice work. Good job. Yeah. Now. Well done, guys. You did it this time, huh? <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for this.
What you just saw was one out of our four Terror Hunt modes that we'll have in Rainbow Six Siege, including Terror Hunt Classic. For those of you who are here in LA, we invite you to come to our booth to get a first hands-on experience of Terror Hunt, as well as try our new PvP mode and map. And for everybody else back at home, we got something for you as well. We are glad to announce that our beta starts on September 24th. It will be available on all platforms, and you'll be able to play both PvP and Turo Hunt. Thank you, everyone, so much, and have a great show. <laughs> Genevieve Fonger, give it up for her and the Rainbow Six Siege team for that live demo. Um, I actually watched those guys play that in rehearsal, and they lost. So just so you know, that's real gameplay. That's the first time I've seen them win. <laughs> I was like, oh, I kind of want him to lose again. <laughs> I first fell in love with gaming, I think like most old people like me did, loitering around in arcades. As a kid, my two best friends were named Defender and Tempest. I occasionally kicked it with Cubert. These were beautiful friendships based on a solid foundation of quarters. And while arcades are mostly gone now, that style of gameplay is alive and well, as evidenced by Trackmania Turbo. This year, Trackmania is finally making the leap from PC to new-gen consoles, and it's bringing its thriving community of customizable maps along with it. Take a look. Please give it up for Tommy Francois and Francois Allo. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Bonjour. That trailer was cut from gameplay footage and track replay. What you see is what you get. Now let's put our money where our mouth is and show you the game. Francois, make yourself at home and pick your favorite track. We all know that's 117. The other cars you see on screen are ghosts of the best time. Now play. Nope. The scope of track Mania Turbo is pretty impressive. Ten more tracks in stadium just for the Blue Series. Four environments, four different gameplays, five difficulty levels. A total of 200 tracks. And if you think that's not enough, take a look at this magic. 
Our track builder mode generates levels on the fly at the press of one button. It's random, so we have no idea what we're going to drive. Three steps to it. Terraforming, look at the pretty beaches and islands, then the track being built, and finally, signage. Infinite tracks you can immediately play. Let's see how well you do, Francois. And be careful, it's tricky. Easier to win an Academy Award than playing Live 83, uh, man? Yeah, funny. <laughs> Restart is immediate. Go. By the way, this is a completely new environment, especially made for Trackmania Turbo. It's called Roller Coaster Lagoon. We also have a brand new take on multiplayer modes, but for that, come beat times on the arcade machines on the booth. And if you're crazy enough, come play the VR demo at the show. Thank you. Arigato deimas. Dankeschön. Cheche. Gracias. Merci. Spasiba. All right, give it up for Tommy and Francois. Clearly multilingual. Our next game has it all. A globe, yeah, yes, I understand. Our next game has it all. A global conspiracy, multiple covert murders, and leaps from unreasonable heights with absolutely no physical repercussion whatsoever. Shine up your blades and lace up your greaves. This is Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Never stops. Come on, look lively, Rooks. Where are you taking it from here, lads?
Try the bitter. Yeah. Who's it? It's actually quite drinkable. Go on. Toast your noble boss. This thief of children. Or you could do better. Join me. Join the rooks. Go get him! Mr. Fright, listen. We can split the money. I mean, just take it all. I... Rooks with me. I'm going with the rooks. Come on, I'll soon enough. Hello, everybody. Thank you. My name is Marc-Alex Cicoté, and I'm the creative director on Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Our game takes place in London in 1868, right in the middle of the Industrial Revolution. This pivotal moment in humanity's history has allowed us to create the first modern Assassin's Creed game. Together with their street gang, our two assassins, the twins Jacob and Evie Fry, will fight to take London out of the hands of the greedy and the corrupt in order to give the city back to its people. We have a brand new gameplay demo to show you at the Ubisoft booth. But this year, we are letting you play the game here at E3 and on console. If you're not one of the lucky few to be able to make it to the Ubisoft boot, well, we're excited to give our fans the chance to play the game at the Uplay Lounge here in LA and get this in seven cities across Europe and Australia. So, cool. So, if you want to start playing Assassin's Creed Syndicate starting tomorrow, just sign up at assassinscreed.com for your chance to take back London. Thank you, and have a great E3. Nice. All right. That, my friends, was awesome. Incredible PC in that game that you guys are going to be able to experience out on the floor and around the world. And I think that's pretty much it. Ah, except for this one last thing. Everybody put them together one more time for Ubisoft CEO, Yves Guillemot. We like to surprise you with new IPs, but really, we really like to surprise you with revolutionizing our beloved franchises. And this has been done by a group in Paris, a very good group that is working in secrecy, and he has been able to create some things that I'm sure you will enjoy because it is so good. So, have a look. Most of us fear death. But for the Santa Blanca drug cartel, death is a saint. They embrace her, praise her. Worshipper. They kill thousands without repercussions. Trafficking poison across South America. Corroding governments. How do you fight an enemy that doesn't fear death? Maybe you hunt them from the clouds.
unleash chaos. Strike from every side. Confuse them. Destroy everything. Decide who lives. fight an enemy that doesn't fear death. You manipulate them from the inside until the monsters wipe each other out. insane, immersive, cinematic, open-world gameplay that you come to Ubisoft for. I know you felt that all in your bones. Ladies and gentlemen, that is our show. Thank you so much for coming out today. Thanks to everybody watching at home. Stay tuned for the live post show. We're going to chat with all of today's speakers. If you're in Los Angeles, check out our booth and the Uplay Lounge to see Ghost Recon in action. And if you're not in LA, check out Ubisoft.com for exclusive E3 insider access. Be sure to join our social media conversation by using the hashtag UBE3. We want to hear from you, and we mean it no matter how painful or crappy your tweets. My name is Aisha Tyler. This is Ubisoft. Play on! We are here uh, at the UBE3 uh, 2015 press conference. Uh, not press conference, conference, con, if you will. And we're going to do a little bit of post show questioning of all the people who spoke on stage today and one who did not. Um, and I have some questions here from fans of the games and fans of Ubisoft from online. So right now we're just going to start off with, um, with uh, Jason Vandenberg and For Honor. So, um, so what we saw in that in that demo was Vikings, Knights, and Samurai. So what can you tell us about the three factions? I and mean, they're obviously fighting at different times. They were going to fight each other. Yes. <laughs> right. Really? Yes, Knights, Vikings, Samurai didn't fight each other in history. <laughs> no, that didn't not. actually happen. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Uh, so we have uh, we have uh, our our knights, our legions, the the defenders, and you know heavy armor and gear. We have our our warborn. We have our Vikings. Rawr, fight and, you mm -hmm. know, beer and enthusiasm, right? Beer, beer, yeah. <laughs> Which I would totally fight for, exactly. by the way. I would so fight for And we have our chosen, our samurai, who are about mastery and focus and the mastery of their weapon and, and mastery of the battlefield. Um, and that's, the, to, uh, to us, that's the three great sort of legacies of warriors. That's the three types of warriors, we think, right? Um, and they'll come together on the battlefield. You can choose your type. You can play um, whichever one you want mm -hmm. and then clash together in that multiplayer frenzy. Uh, and so, as you said, they all have a different combat style, they do. different weaponry. Each character, each, each 
each, the game is built, each hero, each individual um, hero, the, each faction has several heroes in it. Mm -hmm. And a hero is a weapon and a suit of armor and like animation and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And so you choose which hero you want to play. You can customize them yourself, mm -hmm. but you'll stick with the main weapon. Mm -hmm. So you pick the one you like, and then uh, that, that character will fight. Of course, the knights are going to fight more like with their gear and more about style mm -hmm. and you know defense. And the Vikings are going to be more aggressive. Rah, mm -hmm. And then the samurai will be more focused, fast and deadly, that kind of thing. As you would expect. As you would expect. The Vikings are just going to beat you in the head with their beer horn until you... Knights are going to meet that charge. Yeah, just Bring it on. A smear. All right. Um, okay, let's talk about the division. And uh, you, I just... we got to see a little bit of the Dark Zone there. Uh, what else can you tell us about it? More, is there any, is there any well, more we can learn? Them. From, from the Dark playing. Zone? Yeah, about, or, uh, the, about the Dark Zone or about the game. <laughs> Tell us more stuff. That's a big question. <laughs> that was a big question. Tell us what else you, we, what, we, what did we learn inside the show about the Dark Zone? Well, uh, what we saw in the, in the piece today, the demo today, was a, uh, a group of agents kind of entering the Dark Zone. So that's the first thing is it's seamless transition from the open world or mm -hmm. co-op into a multiplayer space, which mm -hmm. is the Dark Zone. So there's no loading screens. There's no sign up. You just move into a space where suddenly PvP can be is enabled, and you know anything can kind of happen. Uh, we saw them kind of take down a group of the new faction that we are introducing at this year's E3, which is uh, the Rikers, who come from Rikers Prison, mm -hmm. and they've escaped when the calamity and the collapse kind of happened, and they've moved into the uh, into Manhattan during the with the chaos and the lawlessness. Um, and then we saw the most important uh, component of the Dark Zone, which is everything in there, the best loot and gear in the game, is contaminated. So, ah. so when you pick it up, you actually need to extract it before you can equip it on your players. So, okay. so it's it's a uh, we want players to kind of get the. Uh, you know, it's like playing poker with, without money. You mm -hmm. know, it doesn't mean anything. So we want them to have to risk something to be to make it to give it that tension and that fear. But we don't want it to be so punishing that you don't want to play. Right. So basically, uh, you know, and then we saw them extract and get out, and we saw the Ryan at the end kind of screw everybody and take all the loot. And, and Super dick. Yes. I mean, come on. <laughs> so you have to take the gear out of the dark zone and then decontaminate it before you. It get happens operable? automatically as okay. it's extracted. So when the helicopter shows up, it takes it back to your base of operations. And when you go back, you have it and you can you equip it. You get out some wipes and you wipe it down. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> some Purell. That's behind the scenes. You don't see <laughs> you don't the wiping. See I would love it to, a cut scene of everybody just wiping all their gear down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's my pitch. That's my pitch. If you're going to go back and write an extra cut scene, that's what I would like. Okay, who am I going to next? Oh, okay, Dirk. Um, so yeah. how did you guys land on 2005? Excellent. Why, Excellent. Why, why can't I pronounce years? <laughs> you get a cell phone, you forget how numbers and words work. How did you land on 2205? as the year for the new Anno. Yeah, well, we did what a Ubisoft studio usually does. We, we asked the gamers. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a huge online survey and mm -hmm. asked them, and they told us, well, when we invented the future setting in 2070, uh, they told us, well, we want to stay there. We want to explore more of that, and we want to move on and leave Earth behind mm -hmm. and uh, go to the moon, and that's what we did. Okay. It looks really, really cool. Thank How you. is going to the moon going to change Anno gameplay? Oh, it changes a lot because obviously the moon, it has no atmosphere, so it's a little bit a hostile place, not meant for human beings to live there. So mm -hmm. um, you suffer from meteor showers or uh, there's radiation. And so the player, they have to shelter all their creation up there. It's, it's a different gameplay than on Earth. Mm -hmm. It looks really, really beautiful. Thank um, you. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to play it. All right, Tommy and Francois, what can you tell us about the other game modes that we're going to see in Trackmania? Look at you with your adorability. <laughs> um, what other game modes are we going to see in Turbo. Um, we we only showed Stadium and Roller Coaster Lagoon. We have two other tracks, which we're, we're a small game, so we're saving those for another show. But we have more to say about multiplayer. We have uh, something great on the show called Double Driver. Mm -hmm. We uh, basically both have a controller to drive one car. We have to synchronize like the piano, or Francois likes to say tango, tango, uh, <laughs> something like that. Um, I'll be Patrick. He'll be Demi. But anyways, um, that's what we have for multiplayer and. The cool part is that you can play any of these multiplayer tracks. Mm -hmm. we, sh we showed the track builder, which is, you know, generates on the fly on its own. Right. But we have a traditional track builder. You can share those, save them, share those online. You can, online online yeah. and you can play those multiplayer. And we have uh, a lot more multiplayer modes. But again, because we're small, we have to keep some for the future. Absolutely. I don't, you don't want to give it all up on the first date. Uh, all right. Who am I going to talk to? Oh, Genevieve, I want to talk about our six siege. How does progression work across the different modes in All right. Siege? Well, as everyone saw in the trailer,
with Angela in it, which was awesome. Yes. Uh, we saw that basically Six is giving you a mission, and how you want to play it is up to you. So you can either do it solo, you can do it co-op, or you can do it in adversarial PvP, mm -hmm. and then you get to recruit all of your operatives to make your, your, dream, your dream team. Here you go. Yes. We saw some pretty aggressive AI in the demo, yeah. so can you tell, it was, <sighs> all right. Let's Very, design I, together. I, just, I, just, I played so many hours of R6 Vegas, I don't even know how to feel right now about this new game. So, it's okay, I was crying backstage. <laughs> the so, so tell us a little bit more about the AI in this iteration. All right, well, yeah. in this iteration of Rainbow Six, we really wanted to make sure to create a new AI, a siege AI, that would be able to react to what you would do, that would be able, like, uh, on the defensive, they're going to be able to fortify their location, they can set up traps, they can surprise, you, they can hide, right. uh, and on the defense, uh, and on the attack, sorry, they can repel, mm -hmm. like just like you can. They can repel, they can breach in, use destruction to create new paths, angles of attack, lines of sight. That's they always can do the many challenge things. with AI, right, is that yeah. they end up in these predictable moves and then you know where they're coming from and what they're going to do. Well, they don't. So <laughs> that's awesome, that's great. I mean, I think yeah. that's, a huge, that's hugely innovative. Okay, Jason Altman, what, tell me a little bit more about what's new in Just Dance 2016. Uh, sure. Well, obviously, there's uh, all the great new songs, uh, including Jason Derulo's. That was pretty. That was me. pretty dope. I like that we it, he, like we didn't just blow it out at the top of the show. We saved a little bit of more for yeah. yeah, it was really exciting. Anyway, go ahead. So uh, one of the, the big features we're excited about this year is called the World Video Challenge. So you can always challenge players, but this year. Uh, you actually see the video of the person you are dancing against. Oh, awesome. And so that's great. It's actually, you really feel like you can, uh, you're playing with them uh, together. And also, uh, another feature that we're adding is co-op scoring for the first time. For the parents playing with their kids, or you know, you want your kids to do well, you want them to feel like they're part of the team, and so you that's can play together. No, wait a minute. If it's parents playing with kids, the kids are the ones carrying the parents, not the other way around. <laughs> Unless you're playing with your toddler, in which case you're just a terrible person. <laughs> Um, uh, tell me a little bit more about how the smartphone controller is going to work, well, how it's going to add to the experience. Of oh, sure. Fans. Because, you know, we wanted to make the game really accessible to everybody and not, you know, for those playing on, on Xbox One or PS4, not everybody has a camera. Right. And we want to be able to, you know, let everybody play. So you'll be able to uh, download the app from the App Store. Six people can do it. Uh, six people can play at the same time. Hold it in your phone like a motion controller. Dance and it scores you. Uh, just as you always have playing the game on That's other platforms. Great. It's really a great experience and a great way for us to you know, let everybody right, bring play everybody the game. Bring everybody into the community. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, Mark, is it Mark Alex? Did I say that right? Okay, Mark, Mark Alex. Everybody calls me Mac. Okay, that's I way simpler, by the way. All right, everybody. Mac. You know, we've got nine studios across the world working for us, so Mac is much simpler. easier for everybody. Okay, good. So tell us uh, a little bit more about the locations that we're going to be seeing in uh, AC Syndicate. Oh my God, there's, like London is so huge. Uh, people will see, uh, I think one of my favorite locations of the game is Westminster Palace, the mm -hmm. Parliament, mm -hmm. because we keep seeing it on, uh, on TV and uh, in movies and everything. And when I went to London to scout out the place, I couldn't get in. So I couldn't see it, so the, the place where I can see it is in the game, and I think it's going to be pretty much like that for a lot of our players. You'll see Buckingham Palace, uh, St. Paul Cathedral, which was one of the, it was the biggest cathedral of the era, uh, the Bank of England, and the train stations. Mm -hmm. So many train stations across London, and they're all very different from one another, so I think players will love them. It was, it was beautifully photorealistic, which I think is a hallmark of this particular franchise. Everything looks and feels so real. Yeah. And to scale, which was really beautiful. Um, there's a community question. Oh. Let's see if this is, let's see if this is as important a question to you as it is to them. Okay, they want to okay. know where Jacob's hat goes when he goes into <laughs> stealth mode. <laughs> hey, that's an excellent question. Magical hat know, lands. There's, a, there's an answer to that. I know. Yeah. <laughs> you, well, you know your hats, so. <laughs> do, you have, do you have the answer? No. no. Uh, so these things were called Oprah hats. So people went to see to the uh, opera. Opera? How do you pronounce not it? Oprah, opera. Not Oprah sorry, Winfrey. Not Oprah, not sorry. Oprah Winfrey. Hey, you know, it's like the French accent. Sorry about that. And uh, opera, I, won't, yeah. I, I won't try to say it again, but opera. they were collapsible hats. Okay. So there were patents uh, that were dating back from the 1800s where they invented those hats. So that's what Jacob has. And that's, he folds it and stick it and in, he his sticks in the spot. Yeah. yeah, and you don't even see that happen. It's just yeah. magical stealth mode. Yeah. Um, awesome. Okay, let's talk about Ghost Recon. All right, Dominic, the, the world looks incredible. Incredible. Tell us what the kind of the real world inspirations were for the Wildlands that we saw in the demo. The inspiration was really, uh, well, the team for this open world, we looked at initially to South America and then specifically at Bolivia mm -hmm. because of this kind of like raw natural beauty that's there. 
Um, so it's it's really what the game's about. It, the game has the ghosts going behind enemy lines mm -hmm. to cause chaos and to disrupt the alliance between the Santa Blanca Mexican drug cartel and the corrupt local government. Mm -hmm. And so we were really inspired by the the geopolitical structure, by the raw natural beauty, like we said. The team went there for two weeks to meet with locals, everything from uh, government leaders to botanists, everything to really try to recreate as much as we could of the of the country, but it's, uh, it's something we're really excited about. I mean, what was great was we were looking, obviously this is pre-alpha footage that we yep. were looking at, Early but days. it looks like narratively, it's not just going to be about great combat, great stealth, great tac tac tactical right. approach, but also stuff. a great story. Yes. So we're not talking too much about the story. Tell just me the story! I'm not going to tell you the story. <laughs> we're, not, we're just showing the world. We're showing the systems we have today. Uh, but come by the booth and we'll be able to show you some more. Okay, well it looks incredible. Thank Look, you. so much of this stuff is going to be playable on the floor. The stuff that's not going to be playable, you can just look at and drool over. Um, and I, I just want to say, you guys, I, this is my fourth year doing this. Every year it gets better. Thanks for having me. I love being a part of it. Um, give it up for the UB. Oh, you're the nicest. We're going to get so drunk after this. Give it up for the UB team. Thanks for watching, everybody at home. We really appreciate all your support. Get out and play those games. <laughs>